Once upon a time, on an island far, far away, a language was born. Brought up by West Germanic, influenced by Vikings, and shaped by the Normans, English is now one of the most spoken languages in the whole world. But how and why exactly has the language spread? And why do we hear such different accents now? To answer this question, we have to go back to little baby English and its upbringing. Up until the end of the Roman Empire, Latin used to be a huge influence on the Celtic languages, which were spoken by the majority of the population at that time. With the end of the Romans came the end of the Latin influence. In the middle of the 5th century, Germanic tribes from what's now West Denmark, the Netherlands and Northwest Germany settled in the British Isles. Naturally, they brought their Anglo-Frisian dialects along with them and together coined the term Anglo-Saxon. The Anglo-Saxon language, now known as Old English, was a welcome change as it introduced much more simple and relevant language like horse, day, woman and man, and also named a bunch of weekdays. Way to leave a legacy. Of course, the young language went through a few more phases of being influenced from the outside before becoming the popular grown-up it is now. In the 8th and 9th century, Scandinavian Vikings conquered parts of Britain. They spoke North Germanic, which became a significant influence on Old English. The Vikings might have violently pillaged and plundered, but they also simplified grammar. Thanks! And left a few hundred words behind, like ugly, knife, and, most importantly, cake, so you can't stay mad at them forever. Eventually, the Vikings set sail towards some new adventures and shortly after, wouldn't you know it, the Normans arrive, ready to conquer England in 1066. Soon, some fancy new words graced the English language and made spelling a little harder again. But because the upper classes were happy speaking Anglo-Norman and the Vikings had no interest in coming back to save England from the inevitable lexical influence of French, words like sovereign, parliament, clerk and about 9,000 997 other loan words are in our vocabulary to this day. This stage gave way to Middle English, spoken to the late 15th century after England had finally managed to free itself from French ruling. The whole freeing thing took a bit longer than expected, 116 years to be precise, but by that point neither side could count anymore, especially not in French, and when the Hundred Years' War finally came to an end in 1453, the English language took over again. That is also around the time a system of orthography was established, largely the same we use today. However, by the beginning of the 16th century, early modern English was established, the language of William Shakespeare. Speaking of, I'm sure Shakespeare would have been delighted to hear that about 500 years later, he is believed to have added 2,000 new words to the English dictionary. They have been at a great feast of languages and stolen the scraps. But all that glitters is not gold. Let's get one thing straight. In reality, William Shakespeare was probably just the first person to write those words down. It's highly likely that many of these words were probably part of everyday discourse already. However, he certainly did create many words himself, a lot of which we still use to this day, except that with a bit over 400 words, the list is much shorter than most people think. Lord, what fools these mortals be! Between the late 16th and early 18th century, the Kingdom of England colonized, conquered and otherwise acquired a variety of overseas territories, also known as the English Colonial Empire. At its height, it was the largest empire in history and at its peak held sway over 23% of the world population at the time and covered 24% of the Earth's total land area. As a result, mother tongue English speakers from England, Scotland and Ireland migrated to North America, the Caribbean, Australia, South Africa and New Zealand and England's linguistic legacy spread even more. And this is where the story of English dialects begins. Hold on, dialects? Don't you mean accents? Thanks for asking. Even though they somewhat overlap, there is indeed a difference between dialects and accents. An accent has to do with sounds. It's about the way we pronounce things based based on the region or country we're from. So an accent is basically the difference in how you pronounce the A in Bath, for example. Dialects, however, are local varieties of a language that are different in wording and phrasing. So the difference between saying popsicle and ice lolly is a dialect. So technically, the English spoken in the United States of America is actually a dialect. The major native dialects of English are often divided into three main categories. The dialects of the British Isles, those of North America, and those of Australasia. And within those dialects, we usually find a number of different accents. But it's not that definite. Most people speak some sort of mishmash version of dialects based on their individual experience. So 
Everyone has their very own idiolect that is unique to them, a linguistic fingerprint, so to say. There is an estimated total of 160 distinct dialects of English spoken worldwide, but American and British English are the reference norms for how English is written, spoken and taught in the rest of the world. Standard British English sounds like this. We drink tea all day, say bloody, blimey and bollocks and enjoy our football. Get us down to the boozer and let's have a pint. And here's what American English sounds like. We love a good burger, say like and really a lot and love watching NASCAR racing. In most of the former British Empire countries where English is not normally spoken natively, British English forms are the norm, though mixed with numerous American English usages. Conversely, places historically influenced by the United States closely follow the American English forms. Third and fourth in the number of native speakers rank the Canadian and Australian English dialects. Whilst featuring many British forms, Canadian English shares vocabulary and pronunciation with American English. Australian English shares many American and British English phrasings alongside numerous unique Australianisms, though the spelling stays closer to British English. G'day mate, us Aussies love a good barbie. Hooroo! Rank 5 in the number of native speakers is South African English, followed by New Zealand and Ireland. How's it going? What's the crack? Many of the territories heavily influenced by the United Kingdom or the United States have developed their own unique dialects, which are now known as World Englishes. Not to confuse with the term World English. World English means English as a lingua franca. World Englishes refers to the different varieties of English developed in different areas of the world. See, it really is the small things that matter. Currently, there are about 75 territories where English is spoken either as a first language or as an unofficial second language in areas like government, education, or law. And because we love structure, world Englishes are classified into three distinct groups of speakers, depending on their use of English. The inner circle quite literally refers to regions where English is used as a primary native language and speaking it originated during the centuries of colonization and migration. The outer circle was produced during Great Britain's imperial expansion in Asia and Africa and includes a whopping number of 150 to 300 million speakers. English is not the native tongue in these regions, but serves as an important common language. Official areas like higher education, the commercial industry and law are all carried out predominantly in English. The outer circle includes India, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Malaysia, Kenya, the Philippines and others. The expanding circle includes basically most of the rest of the world's population, where English is widely used for international communication, but doesn't play a historical or governmental role. This includes territories such as China, Nepal, Russia, Japan, Egypt, Nordic countries, non-Anglophone Europe and others. To make a long story short, English exists in various forms around the globe. Billions of people speak it, some natively, others close to it and many as a foreign language. And most importantly, everyone speaks with an accent. It's part of who we are, where we're from and where we've been. Ready to hear your accent in a new language? Then Buzu could be for you. Start learning a new language for free and in as little as 10 minutes a day. Sign up to Buzu now and connect with a community of 100 million native speakers and language learners from all over the world.